Good morning, <clears throat> Christian friends. My name is Pastor George Jackson, and I'm here today on the behest of Pastor Sasha at the West Seventh-day Adventist Church, and uh, Elder uh, Victor Bill, uh, one of his elders, were responsible for me being here today. We are faced with a pandemic such as we have, most of us have not seen in this age. And I wanna talk about that today and uh, provide with you a word of encouragement that the Lord has given me. And I trust that it will be a blessing to you because it has certainly been a blessing to me. Let's bow our heads as we pray. Our great God in heaven, it is our privilege and opportunity to call upon you because prayer is one to be made at all times, whether out loud, publicly, or privately, or just within our hearts. We know that you hear and answer our prayers. Be with us today in this study, and thank you for this opportunity to worship you. In the name of Jesus, we ask with thanksgiving. Amen. I would invite you to turn in your Bibles to the chapter, uh, to Romans chapter 8, and we're going to read verses 28 and 29. That's Romans chapter 8, verses 28 and 29. In this reading, I'm reading from the King James Version, and I would invite you to check your Bibles or your cell phones and follow along. That's Romans chapter 8, verses 28 and 29. It reads, and we know <clears throat> that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the call according to his purpose, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. I've entitled the message today, Bad News and Good News. Bad News and Good News. There's an old Chinese story that is very interesting about a farmer who lived a very simple life. He had a small home and a few children. One day in late summer, the old farmer was working his field with his old sick horse. The farmer felt compassion for the horse and desired to lift its burden. <clears throat> so he let the horse loose to go to the mountains and live out the rest of his days. Soon afterwards, Neighbors from the nearby village visited, offering their condolences, and said, What a shame! Now your only horse is gone. How unfortunate you are! You must be very sad. How will you live, work the land, and prosper? The farmer replied, Who knows? We shall see. Two days later, the old horse came back, now rejuvenated after meandering on the, in the uh, mountainsides while eating the wild grasses. He came back with 12 new, younger, and healthy horses which followed the old horse into the corral. Word got out in the village of the farmer's good fortune. And it wasn't long before people stopped by to congratulate the farmer on his good luck. How fortunate you are, they exclaimed. You must be very happy. Again, the old farmer said softly, who knows? We shall see. At daybreak on the next morning, the farmer's son set off to attempt to train the new wild horses but the farmer's son was thrown to the ground and broke his leg. One by one, the villagers arrived during the day to bemoan the farmer's latest misfortune. Oh, what a tragedy. Your son won't be able to help you farm with a broken leg. You'll have to do all the work by yourself. How will you survive? You must be very sad, they said. Calmly, Going about his usual business, the farmer answered, Who knows? We shall see. Several days later, a war broke out, and the emperor's men arrived in the village demanding that the young men come with them
to be drafted into the emperor's army. As it happened, the farmer's son was deemed unfit because he had a broken leg. What very good fortune you had, the villagers exclaimed as their young sons were marched away. You must be very happy. Who knows? We shall see, replied the old farmer as he headed off to work his field alone. As time went by, on the broken, the broken leg uh, healed and the son was left with a slight limp. Again, the neighbors came to pay their condolences. Oh, what bad luck. Too bad for you. But the old farmer simply replied, who knows? We shall see. As it turned out, the other young boys had died in the war and the old farmer and his son were the only able-bodied men left in the village. They were the only ones capable of working the village lands. And the old farmer became wealthy and very generous to the villagers. They said, oh, how fortunate we are. You must be very happy. To which the old farmer replied, who knows, we shall see. In this ancient story of the Chinese farmer, we see that good and bad are interconnected. They are two sides of one same coin. If everything seems perfect, it won't stay that way. And if everything seems bad, it won't stay that way either. I like what 1 Kings 18.1 says. In the King James Version, it says, And it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah. It came to pass. It came to pass. And that basically means, it came to pass, basically means, and then the next thing happened. The essence is, God is able to bring good out of bad. God is able to bring good out of bad. There's a song that says, I know uh, that trouble don't last always. Because God is able to bring something good out of something bad. Well, let me share with you the bad news. With the high daily death count pushing the capacity of morgues in cities across the land, the real concern is that dead bodies can transmit the COVID-19 virus. So even though the person may be deceased, the virus is still alive for a while. That's a big concern and is not good news. Scientists have also discovered that patients with uh, disorders that affect the heart, the liver, the blood, the lungs, and they have a weakened immune system, they face a higher risk of becoming very sick with the COVID-19, not to mention the seniors that are among us. But the best approach to bad news and good news is what the Apostle Paul called in Acts 20, verse 27. Acts 20, 27. When he mentions the whole counsel of God. God's whole counsel includes both bad news and good news. Because God has a plan to redeem us from this sin-cursed earth. But it did come with Good news. I could spend a lot of time on the rising death rate and how many more people are going to be affected and we're waiting for vaccines. I could go into that. But let me get into the good news. I got three things for you. Well, let me tell you uh, five things. Five things. Good news. Number one, the work of nurses is to be celebrated always. But on the 13th of this month was International Nurses Day, which took on a different significance in the light that the nurses and the first line essential people 
are working overtime during this COVID-19 pandemic to help those that are sick. So we celebrate our nurses, May the 13th, International Nurses Day. That's good news. Number two, as of April the 23rd, the first human trials for a potential COVID-19 vaccine got underway from the Oxford, uh, University of Oxford. And scientists working on the vaccine say that the injection they are developing has an 80% chance of success. I don't know about you, but that's good news. Number three. NBA superstar Steph Curry and his wife Aisha have donated a million dollars to pupils in Oakland because when the schools closed down, these children had no way to eat two meals. That's good news. Number four, Leonardo DiCaprio joined forces with Lauren Powell Jobs, Apple and the Ford Foundation to establish America's Food Fund in response to this uh, uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Donations have been mounting uh, with Lady Gaga and Oprah Winfrey also pledging their support. And Amazon's chief uh, CEO, uh, Jeff Bezos, donated $100 million to Feeding America. That's good news. In Oregon, number five, in Oregon, World War II veteran William Lapshe uh, celebrated his 104th birthday after recently making a recovery from the coronavirus, 104. In Genoa, Italy, uh, a woman 102 years old survived the illness, illness. And in Iran, 100, there was a 103-year-old woman who reportedly made a recovery after spending one week in the hospital. Good news. And finally, our response to future pandemics should improve because the COVID-19 pandemic has exposed shortcomings in the healthcare systems throughout the world. And they have provided us with an opportunity to improve. For example, a faster global response, better and quicker distri distribution of test kits, and the more uh, ability, the, the greater ability to coordinate and uh, to have public messages to be uh, uh, expected the next time around. God can bring good news out of bad news. The giant sequoia tree. It is perhaps one of the largest trees on earth. They can live for more than 3,000 years and grow to more than 300 feet tall, which is about the size of a 28-story building. But it needs fire to reproduce. When lightning strikes happen, fires punch holes in the forest, burning away leaves. And the fire heats up the cones in the tops of these giant sequoia trees. And eventually, seeds are released and they spread out over the ground and germinate. And they grow in the minerals and the ashes left by the fire. But only because of the fire are the trees able to reproduce. Because God can bring something good out of bad news. In this dance we call life, there are things that are very, very bad. If the truth be told, until we know the bad news, we can't fully appreciate the good news. You wouldn't appreciate a stranger bursting into your house, grabbing hold of you, and dragging you outside until you understood your house was on fire. Because God can bring something good out of something bad. In Romans chapter 8, verse 28, our scripture text for today, 
In King James it says, and we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God and to them who are called according to his purpose. There are three lessons that I want to share with you. I hope that's all right, because that's all I got to give you. Three lessons. Number one, lesson number one from Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. Number one, one of the most helpful things that you can learn as a Christian, and even if you're not a Christian, you can learn is how to handle trials. How to handle trials. The question is asked about uh, handling trials. Exactly how would we go about that? There's a story uh, about a shipwreck. And when the sole survivor reached a small uninhabited island, he prayed that God would rescue him, but help didn't come. Eventually, he built a hut out of driftwood to protect him from the elements. And one day he returned from scavenging for food and found his hut on fire, burning to the ground, smoke rising into the sky. And angrily, he cried, God, how could you do this to me? And many times when bad things happen, we want to know why are we being persecuted and why is this happening to me? Well, the next morning, he was awakened by rescuers. He asked, how did you know I was here? And they said, we saw your smoke signal. The very thing that he was counting on to keep him from the elements turned out to be the thing that caused his rescue, the burning down of his hut. God loves, God's love sometimes seems like bad news because of the difficulty he allows us to come our way. But everything that is bad is not necessarily going to stay bad because God has a way of bringing something good out of something bad. Romans chapter 2, I mean, verse, uh, Romans chapter 8 and verse 2, the second point that I want to give you is it tells us that all things may not be good, but that God can and will use all things for good. Trials and circumstances that happen that come our way, disasters, pandemics, illnesses, disease, suffering, and death. Romans tells us all things may not be good. We understand that. But God can and God will use all things for good. So is Paul saying, whatever happens is good? No. Is Paul saying that suffering, evil, and tragedy are good? No. Is Paul saying everything will work out if we just have enough faith? No. Is he saying that we will be able to understand why God allowed tragedy to come? No. What then is Paul saying? Paul is saying here in Romans 8, 28, I am erecting a sign over the incomprehensible, inexplicable, unexplainable mysteries of life. A sign that is erected that says, quiet, God is at work. When I was growing up as a boy in uh, Virginia, they would have some very bad thunderstorms that would pass through. And they were quite frightening. And when the, thunder, the, thunder, the, the, the thunderstorms came through, I remember my mother, and especially my grandmother, would always say, be quiet. God is at work. And you know, as children, we didn't fully understand God being at work in a thunderstorm. But later on, we became to uh, appreciate the fact that there was rain to help clean the air and clear out everything. But at the time, it was like, be quiet. God is at work. Now, when you look at bad things that happen, Paul is erecting a sign that says, be quiet. God is at work. And God is working on bringing something good out of something bad. 
John Erickson, Erickson uh, Tata, uh, famous writer and spiritual worker and so forth, was paralyzed from the neck down in a diving accident at age 17, broke her neck. Because of that accident, she also had a powerful ministry with disabled people. But in her 60s, she developed breast cancer. You would say, that's bad news. But in her 60s, after having developed breast cancer, she says now, now I had, I, she says now, I had a ministry to the disabled people for many years, but now I have a ministry to people with cancer. What a bold and prophetic thing to say, to look at the bad thing that God brings you through turns out to be a good thing to help other people. Finally, I want to deal with one last thing that deals with Romans 28. The final thing uh, is that you may uh, never have noticed it, but Romans 8, 28 has an accompanying verse in verse 29. Now, it's a little bit strange to understand because some people use this as the doctrine of predestination. Like God is so designed that some people are going to be saved and some people are going to be lost but he still gives us free choice. I want to read this from the Message Bible, which probably has one of the better renditions as you would read it from the Greek. So the Message Bible, uh, Romans 8, 29 says, God knew what he was doing from the beginning. He decided from the outset to shape the lives of those who love him along the same lines as the life of his son. The Son stands first in the line of humanity, in the line of humanity he restored. So what it's saying here is that those who choose to follow Jesus Christ, God will use you uh, and, and he will give you that special privilege to be, have your lives shaped along the same lines as Jesus Lives were shaped. Now we all say that we are Christians. Uh, well, a lot of people say that they are Christians, but they pretty much own the name Christian, but are they disciples and followers of Jesus Christ? This is the ultimate good news, and that is that God wants every person to put their trust in His Son and have everlasting life. That's the good news. Now, I thank God for what we're going through because he's still blessing. God is still on the throne. He's still in charge. But these are dangerous times in which we live in. They're talking about it is perhaps after uh, whether it's 63% or 83% of the herd being affected or we get a vaccine for COVID-19 before this pandemic is over, that that's the good news. The good news is that God is using this to bring something good out of something bad. And by the means that he chooses to use it, uh, to God be the glory because he wants us to be fashioned along the same lines as his son, Jesus Christ. Two things. God allows everything into our lives for one of two purposes. One, either to bring us into a relationship with him, either to bring us into a relationship with him, or if we already know him, then to make us like his son. God knows how to bring something good on something bad. The bad news, but then the good news. I want to finish with this. The story of Lewis was a life that is an example to how God causes all things to work together for good. In the French Academy of Science, there is a rather plain old shoemaker's all on display. Now, an awl is an instrument pretty much like an ice pick, but it's used to either mark 
or a piece of wood or to start a hole, but it's it's a sharp pointed instrument, oh, about six inches or so long. This is just an old shoemaker's awl on display. The story behind the awl, that's A-W-L, awl, A-W-L, is quite extraordinary. To look at it, no one would ever suspect that a simple tool could be responsible for anything of consequence. In fact, if used recklessly, it all can cause a tremendous amount of pain and damage. It was the all that one day fell from the shoemaker's table and put out the eye of the shoemaker's nine-year-old son. The injury was so severe that the boy lost vision in both eyes and was enrolled in a special school for children who were blind. The boy learned to read by handling large carved wood blocks. When the shoemaker's son became an adult, he thought of a new way to read. It involved learning a system of dots translated into letters of the alphabet that could be read from a piece of paper on any flat surface. Lewis decided to actually use the same awl which had blinded him as a boy to form the dots into a new form of reading system for the blind, known today as Braille. Because that shoemaker's son was named Lewis Braille. Out of the pain of an affliction that caused him to lose sight in both eyes, the same instrument that caused the damage was the same instrument used to create a new language for those who were sightless. You know, there's not a whole lot that's good about Good Friday. Good Friday was a terrible, awful tragedy. The Son of God had been beaten and scourged and the flesh torn out his back, he had spittle in his face and had snatched hair out of his beard. He had a crown of thorns placed on his head and he was ignominiously, had his clothes removed from him and there he lay uh, down on this cross and they nailed his hands and his feet. And we were told by one religious writer they dug a hole about six feet deep and just set it up and let it drop. And when it dropped into the ground, it tore gaping holes in his hands, set between two thieves. And they mocked him and they railed against him and they called him names. Even the two thieves joined in the confusion. But one thief saw the beautiful character of the Son of God, Jesus Christ, hanging on the cross and he would not reviled back. He would not strike back. He would not defend anything. It was a terrible day. Finally, he cried out with a loud voice, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And we cry out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken us with this worldwide pandemic? that's killing thousands of people in this country alone, well over 90,000. Why have you forsaken us? Terrible day, taken off the cross before the sun set because the Sabbath was drawing on, put it in a brand new grave owned by Joseph of Arimathea. It was a bad day. The only thing good about Good Friday was Easter Sunday morning. Three days later, they take him off the cross on Friday, bury him quickly. So that was a part of Friday which constituted one day. When the sun went down, a new day started because the day starts with the evening and the morning. They put him in the grave on Friday and then all day Saturday or Sabbath, 
He rested in the grave. When the sun set on Saturday, actually, it was the beginning of the first day of the week because the days start not at midnight, but with the setting of the sun. So a part of Friday, he's in the grave. All day Saturday, or the Sabbath, he's in the grave. Saturday night starts Sunday, he's in the grave. But early, Sunday morning, an angel was dispatched from glory. And this angel flew down to where Jesus was. Stone was rolled back. And the angel cried with the Lord, loud voice. We're told by some Bible writers that the, the angel cried with a loud voice, Jesus, thy father calleth thee. And someone said, if they had not said Jesus, thy father calleth thee, all of the sleeping saints would have gotten up. But even so, some of the sleeping saints got up. Early Sunday morning, Jesus got up and he took that napkin off of his face, the part of the grave clothes, and folded it. When you fold a napkin, in those times, it meant that the meal was over. If you didn't fold your napkin and you just left it where it was and you got up, that meant you were coming back. But when you folded the napkin, that meant that's over. It's over. It's finished. Jesus comes out the tomb. Oh, death. Where is that sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? Something good comes out of something bad. Something miraculous happens even in a pandemic. Something good happens when you know that God is still in charge because God can rule and he can overrule. And he chooses not to overrule and you've got to go through something. When Jesus comes again, he'll fix it for you. I'm glad I serve a risen Savior. And he's in the world today. I know that he is living whatever men may say. I see his hand of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer and just the time I need him, he's always near because he lives. There's a song, some modern song. It's by a duo male group called King and Country. And it's entitled Burn the Ships. I just want to read a couple of verses to you. It says, how did we get here? All cast away on the lonely shore. I can see in your eyes, dear, it's hard to take for a moment more. We got to burn the ships, cut the ties, send a flare into the night, say a prayer, turn the tide, dry your tears and wave goodbye. Step into a new day. We can rise upon the dust and walk away. We can dance upon our heartache, yeah. So light a match. Leave the past, burn the ships, and don't you look back. Don't let it arrest you, this fear of falling again. I will be right here until the end. Oh, it's time to burn the ships, cut the ties, send a flare into the night, say a prayer, turn the tide, dry your tears, and say goodbye. Why? Because bad news won't stay bad news all the time. Because God knows how to take all things and make them work together for good news. Don't you want that good news today? I don't know about you, but I know I do. So let's bow our heads and talk to the Lord about bringing something good out of the bad that we're experiencing. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, many of us living have never seen a pandemic before. Many of us that are living now may be experiencing job loss and financial difficulties, yea, even some of the basic things of life, being able to take care of our families and put a roof over their heads and put food on the table and food lines and and other sources uh, are being made available for those who are unfortunate. And God, you know what we're going through. People are hurting. People are dying. People can't even say goodbye to their loved ones. 
And so God, we are calling on you to bring something good out of something bad. To step into a new day. That we can rise upon the dust and walk away. That we can dance upon our heartache, yeah. So light a match, leave the past, burn the ships, and don't look back. Bless us to this end, is our prayer in Jesus' name.